Informer. You may have been going to come together and get the name. I need to bomb bomb. Yeah. What's up, everybody? This is Joaquin. <laughs> this is Jay. And uh, this is the Overflow podcast that this is outcry.com. Jay couldn't speak. He was uh, laughing because I opened up with Informer. Or no. snow. I bought it with snow. No, it's that song informer. The gibberish you said afterwards. Well, because I can never understand what he said. <laughs> I don't think anyone could ever understand what he said. I think um, Jim Carrey understood him perfectly when he when he when he did that parody on um in Living Color. Yeah, but you know, they had time to write. I I, I just came up with that off the top of my off the top of the dome. <laughs> I didn't have time to to write. But uh, yeah, you know that was one of those weird, weird, catchy songs that I don't know was just a cool song back in the, back in the day, and we don't even know why. And you know he was Canadian. He wasn't even like you know like a North like a well, was he? he was North American. Yeah, he was like Canadian, and he uh, I saw something about it. and he, I don't even know why we're talking about snow. All I know is that he was Canadian. I'm pretty sure if anybody out there can can uh, tell me I'm wrong, then you go ahead and tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> but I'm like 99% sure that he was Canadian. He was informer. He was informing on the USA. He was a No, snitch. he wasn't. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he was talking about being falsely accused or by the cops for something. You know, that's what you think because no one could really understand the whole Yeah, Canadian. Ah, in your face, sucker. Canadian reggae musician Snow with his one hit wonder. That's all he needed. Produced by MC Shan. Did you MC, know that? I did not know it was produced by MC Shan. Wow. Did you see? Now, okay, so I'm about to take it like really kind of way back for a little bit, but did you see what MC Shan did like this diss rap? Like he did this diss the freestyle one. like Karis One. It was garbage. And then Karis One came back. It was like. Like MC Shan's like MC Shan's like um this was something like six minutes long or something. Yeah. And KRS one came back with a minute and a half. It just destroyed him. Really? I didn't see the response. I didn't know he responded. <laughs> I'm gonna have to look that up. He responded. It was it was it was ugly. So um Yeah, a coworker of mine sent me the the diss. Right. Um, it was MC, pretty cool. MC Shan's thing and um like like two or three minutes in I got tired of it. Yeah, but it was pretty clever because he because so he, he used a lot of like he used a lot of a lot of references, like, references from old songs, from the, you know, from the old KRS One songs, from but, the old Boogie Boogie Down Boogie Down, but songs, but yeah, but like, KRS, I, I, I was, KRS One came back and just I got so tired of listening to it. Minute I, I, and a half, bro. I'm not the, I didn't know he responded. I had to check that out. Them. We'll we'll look at it as soon as this is done because it's a minute and a half of just awesomeness. But so for, <laughs> for those of you that might not be understanding what the heck we're talking about we're just two when, old guys we're talking about two old, old guys talking That's about it. old rappers and their beefs um and, so and, when like, two, and, 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 and and like really really like son you're too old to be beefing like that on a song that was out like in the 80s <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. i was in middle school when B yeah, B came like, out. like yeah, I, I had that album on wax oh nice right like my brothers and i we put our money together we bought yeah. it together you know, if you would only play with mom and dad went around. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> right, but like, that's, hit, I was hit. in middle school, man. Did you, did you hear that, Milka? <laughs> you should punish him now when, when next time you see him. Mira! Nah, we already got caught. But, uh, yeah, so it was just, it's funny, it's funny. What's funny about that is, is like, you know, it's at, at a certain point, you just get too old for that nonsense. Or you would You would think you'd get too old for that nonsense. Like, at a certain point, like, you got to stop fighting with people and just beefing about stuff that happened 20, 30 years ago. Yeah. Too old. And I think that's part of why I, tur- I like, I shut it down when I was listening to it. Right. I'm like, dude, I mean, not only are you too old to be for, for this beef, but, like, even the songs that you're referencing, like... Nobody really now. Nobody like none of, these, none of these new hip hop kids. None, nobody under nobody thirty-five. Like. Nobody under <laughs> like thirty-five. Let's like at the low end. They don't know what you're referencing. They don't know what you're talking about. I don't know who you are. It's like what? What, what is that? It's like because the bridge is over. The bridge is over. But we're not. Our beef isn't over. It's like what? What bridge? What are you talking about? Yeah, it, it was. Um. So you're gonna love Karis' response. Yeah, I, I look forward it. to it. Um. So. 
yeah, man. So it's just been uh, it's been a crazy week. Um, that was one of the things that happened this week. That just, it, you know what? It just made me chase the 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 hip hop beef rabbit hole there for a little bit. <laughs> like, remember Cannabis when him and LL got into it? Yeah. Oh, that was that was such a good. That was now that was a good battle. That was a pretty good battle. But anyway, for those of you that. For those of you that know what we're talking about, we're going to go ahead and... Ger- geriatric hip-hop beef. Geriatric hip-hop <laughs> beef. Man, you guys are too old for that. <laughs> but um, a lot of people are just too old for a lot of stuff. That's all I'm going to say about that. Um, You're going to leave that right there. Yeah, gonna, just park it. Just we'll, we'll take it up some other time. But, um, yo, man, so it's the end of the week. Um, it's been a pretty slow week at work for me. Uh, pretty nice. We've been training uh, this new guy who we think will be around for... Is this the Coca Cola kid? Yeah, he's the well, he's a grown man. Don't call him a kid. He's a Coca Cola. Yeah, wasn't that a guy. movie like the Coca Cola kid? Was it? It's something like that. It was the Flamingo kid. Uh huh. But that's true. I tell you what, though, like he he uh, almost made me want to like apply Coca Cola because he was like free cokes. You should. You should man, free the, free kidney stones and diabetes. The pay, you know. Hey. You know that's true. No, <laughs> no, because you know you also you also you, you mix it up, right? You had the. Coke, you drink a water. You have so you, a Coke. You have a Coke and a Dasani. Just, just, Coke, the Dasani. Dasani. Yeah. yeah that's it. <laughs> the, only, the only thing is, like, you can't, like, they won't let you bring any food associated with Pepsi. So no Taco Bell. No Taco Bell. No, no Kentucky Fried no Chicken. No, no, no Cheetos. Um, Cheetos. Yeah. Cheetos is owned by Pepsi. I, I Frito Lay is owned by Pepsi. Oh, was he? Because he was telling us that there was a snack. That they used to have um, in their snap machines, and he said as soon as that that company signed with Pepsi, like he goes, next thing you know, you see the snap machines open, <laughs> just get rid of all those Dang, snacks. Yo, it's serious. And then and then the next day it was like so like Tom's, like some generic, you know, like the generic, <laughs> you know, chips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it must have been that because Frito Lay, Frito Lay belongs to Pepsi. Yeah, it's funny, it was Frito Lay because over Frito-Lay. here in the states it's Frito Lay, right? And it's its own logo, but. I don't know if you know this, but like in Puerto Rico, in Puerto Rico, it's Frito, it's, frito Lay. It, yeah, it's Frito Lay. <laughs> but if you look at the packaging or whatever, you have the Pepsi logo all over it, the PepsiCo, and like whatever oh, the really? symbol no. is. Yeah, all over it. That's no. that's 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 how I that's how you. Oh, Pepsi for Frito Lay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, all I know is I think yeah, Frito Lay had a had a plant in um and down there by a uh, Perry and Warner Robins, and if you knew somebody that worked for them, every once in a while you get boxes full of. Chips. <laughs> so that's all I remember about them. <laughs> like free chips. Frito Lay is like the main, the main brand of chips in Puerto Rico. So it was, uh, it was, it was pretty. Hilarious. I told you about Puerto Rico. Do you know that you can now buy Limbel in a store for a dollar? The same little no. cups that we used to buy for, for that we used to get for a quarter from right. from La Missy down the street, from La Señora down the street. Now they have those from, cups. From La Señora Mary. They're selling them for a dollar in stores, oh, like in nice. supermarkets. That's cool, dude. Whoever, I mean, whoever came up with that idea is brilliant. Is a genius because I'll spend a dollar, <laughs> right? Like because because you're like, well, when I was a kid, is a quarter, but then you're like, well, but we're older now, inflation. Like you have that ration. You like you rationalize that. No, all, all I'm thinking is that. I hope they had limon because that was the, my the, favorite. The, 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 like Missy from down the street, she died years she ago. She died years ago. <laughs> she was already old. We were kids. Well, you know, last time when I was in Puerto Rico, uh, was it two years ago now? Um, man, I wanted some lean bed. Man, I, you know, and I went and I ate. Right? That's all I did for like two weeks. I'm, yeah, I remember the pictures. It, it's amazing I didn't like die, right? <laughs> because for about seven or eight straight days, all I drank was cola champán and, and malta. And like ate, and ate all that, all, it just those ate all that food. fried food, and but you know, but it's so hot, you kind of you sweat a lot of that out anyway. That's true. But um, I drank so much cola champagne that one day I like went and I was like, I couldn't taste it. That's that's, that's a lot, that's right. A lot. Like I just couldn't even taste it anymore. <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I switched over to to my time and coffee or something. I can't remember, but um. Uh, yeah, so I, I go to San Juan with my cousin, and we're walking around, and there was this dude there. He lived in San Juan, so I mean, he's been there for, you know, his family probably owned that house for forever, right? And he sold Limbel for 50, 75 cents, something like that. All right, so. It was cool. You know who makes Limbel? Who? My mom. No, she don't. My mom makes Limbel. I don't so. believe it. 
I don't believe Mika makes lean bed. She makes lean bed, son. That's gotta be. It's gotta be shown. It's gotta be proven. <laughs> Until I see it, it's not true. She makes lean bed, yo. There's only one thing I take by faith. <laughs> she makes lean everything. Bed. Everything else needs to be proven. She was making him all last summer. Well, I was killing it, and you didn't share with me. Well, actually, she wasn't really sharing all that much. It's just if I happen to be at the house, it's like, oh, he said lean bed. Oh, word. Yeah, well, of course, you know, with your nephews and nieces, they, <laughs> they don't stand a, don't stand a chance no ways. She that, makes limber. I think I'm hoping that this summer she, make, she what did she make? What which which limber does she make? What did she make? She made the mani, the vainilla. She didn't make so, any like the fresa or the I'm not I don't remember. I don't remember. The, I don't remember. I don't no, remember. All I know is limon is limon has always been my favorite, man. Dude, tell her. Oh my goodness. Tell her to make some of limon. My grandmother has some little little the limon tree up in the back and she would make mm-hmm. the, the, the juice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, so good. Man, do it. You know what? I'm going to Puerto Rico. My mom's going to Puerto Rico <laughs> Saturday. I'm going to go with her. <laughs> you, can't, you can't tell her to bring you some. <laughs> no. <laughs> now, hope, now, she's going to be bringing me some more records from my grandfather's collection. So there's that. But, um, oh, that's dope. But yeah, man. So now I want Limbe. Dag nabbit. Ah, oh, I wonder if the Puerto Rican bakery has like a has like a secret stash. I should ask them. Yo, do you guys make secret lean bed? <laughs> I'm telling you, mom makes them. Ask her. Ah, uh, you know what? Like I said, man, proof is in the lean bed. So then, ask her because it's not pudding. Um, but yeah. Anyway, now I'm freaking hungry for all this deliciously bad food for me. Uh, so what's up, man? What's um. Uh... What's been going on? I know you've had a, a bit of a rough week. Anything good happened this week? Um, I'm breathing. <laughs> barely. Um, 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 uh, uh, that's for you, Angel. Uh, uh, um, <laughs> I got these new shoes. You got new shoes? No. Uh, got a new shirt yesterday. Come on, man. All right, I'll I'll share it. Um, so Jay was showing me pictures of Cal and his new little his new kicks, and um, and he was fascinated oh. with not only his red shoes but with the black top. With the black top, no, no, wait. Something something cool did happen. Um, it was last weekend. Well, that's okay. It'll, right, it'll last count. weekend. It'll yeah, because it, it counts because our, our week counts after after Friday. Yes. Right. So Saturday, Saturday. Our buddy Junior, right? Yes. Junior's like he's like we've been friends for like twenty years, right? Yeah, you know, he's more he's more of a brother than I'm friend. O- of me. I've only known him for like eight, <laughs> but um, <laughs> right? So yeah, he's my brother. He's out of Nashville. He came for the weekend. That's right, right? Because you guys went and we record went shopping, record got him also, and you got him, um, you got him a record player also, right? Record on Sunday, and- but Saturday Saturday night, like we went out. Actually, it's so funny. We went out. Shopping for him too, like he needed clothes for like this big bougie gig that he has coming right. up in Nashville, right? So you know, we get when we get to I the house. Say, no, 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 because we, we, we're pressed for time. When no, we um, we're good. when we uh, when we got home, I got on Facebook because like, we got home mad late. So I got on Facebook and I'm scrolling whatever, and then I see that um this old friend of Junior and myself who's in Florida. Not only did he happen to be in Georgia, but he happened to not only be, but he happened to be in Kennesaw, right? And then on top of that, he was in Kennesaw for the weekend as the guest preacher at my mom's church. Right. Nice. Right. So it was like, you know, this is like too, like too coincidental. It was the trifecta. Right. So um, I hit him up. Right. Now, this guy, we haven't seen each other, like the three of us, we haven't seen each other in like maybe 12 to 15 years. Okay. Okay. Now, this guy was a part of this ministry called Holy Ghost Missions, right? Holy Ghost Missions birthed him. His name is Gabby, Pastor Gabby down there in um in Florida. But Holy Ghost Missions also birthed um Sammy Rodriguez, who's like like big time, like. I'll take your word for it. No, no, big like like he's big time. Like he right now he's in charge. He's got like a big. Church in Sacramento. He um he just came back from from what I see because we, we we follow each other on Facebook. He just came back from um 
speaking at the the Planet Shakers conference, right? He um like you regularly as like as a speaker at the White House or like right. stuff like that. Like 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 it's it's so surreal to me to see like this guy who who basically like he inspired me to be a preacher. Right. Right. As a kid. Like we're even that we're not even that that far apart in age. I think he's only older than me by two or three years. But when I saw him preach, like I knew it was cemented. I want to be a preacher. Right. So uh-huh. Holy Ghost Missions, Holy Ghost Missions, uh-huh. it was like just a group and, 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 and it's funny, right? Because I always I always mention this down here, how different it is now from back then. Because back then they were all from different churches, like even like different boroughs in New York. And um they, they all just got together and started doing their own, just started and built their own ministry. Right? right. It was funny. We had like a corny tagline. When the devil starts messing, God starts blessing. Oh, it was like, yeah. <laughs> but we made, they made like t-shirts. I mean, but t-shirts. that's, you know, you're talking, you know, back in the seventies. <laughs> <laughs> right. So like these guys were like my inspiration and I was the, the youngest tag along. I think I was more of a mascot. Than anything right. <laughs> than anything else with these guys, right? So, yeah, we um, I hit him up on Facebook. Like Junior and I, we both hit him up on Facebook, and he hit us back. And we, we went to the Marietta Diner like at ten o'clock at night, nice, just to um, just to reminisce, not just reminisce, but also like share on the different things that God is doing with us now, right? Because right. like it's like the the majority of our lives. We've been doing well. Basically, we've been doing ministry, right? Right. So, it wasn't just like back in the day, but also what's going on now. He told me okay. like the the things that he had to suffer through. Like he just planted a church six months ago. Yeah, he, I know, I know, because I heard him. I heard him Sunday. Right, you came he, on. He, you came on Sunday, and he talked. Yeah, he, instead of getting my sleep, he, he talked about it. <laughs> That's because I worked overnight. Yeah, let you me, worked me, overnight. You worked from me, six to six. Yeah, let me let's kind uh, yeah. of clarify that. <laughs> yeah, right. It was like you heathen. <laughs> uh, you you worked like twelve hours overnight. But um, yeah, I mean, I can share that with you later. But like, like he's like he went through a lot. Yeah, Junior actually told right. me. A oh, little, he told you told a little, a little bit. Yeah, you know, it was, so it's like it's rough, it's crazy. Yeah, but, like this dude. Like, I don't understand. Some he's, of it. He said something to me. Well, he said something. He shared something with us. I was like, you see, this is why. This is why, like, I made sure that I, like, attached myself to them. Right? Because his heart for ministry, like, it's still there. Right? So, basically, he was... I hope so. He started a he, church. No, no. He bought... <laughs> but I say for ministry. Because a lot of people want to start churches, right? And they end up building, like, um, cathedrals Monuments. for themselves. Yeah, right? Yeah, Monuments yeah, yeah, yeah. for themselves. But this guy, he bought this church and he bought this land, Right? But he uses that only for outreach, for ministry, food bank, counseling. Like they feed like seventy five families, right? Families like four or five people or more. Seventy five families out of there. They do youth camps and stuff like that. And then he actually pays rent for church for church services for church service in a school. Right? He'll pay rent at the auditorium. You know, he has a church building, right? He has a church building. Yeah. But he'd rather use that for actual ministry to be real missional about everything. And just to give away and pour back into the community, and then like pay his rent at a school so that he so they can hold services there. Okay, That's what's right. Up. So, like it's like like it's it's so rare to hear something like that from somebody. Right? It's just yeah. I mean that's just that's a that's one of those things that you're like you just go like what <laughs> because I mean and and across just across the board, right? That's just one of those things that you don't. I, I've never heard of anybody doing that. Let me put it that way. I've never heard of, a, of somebody paying rent for their services because they were going to use what would, would have been the church building for the different ministries that, that, that are being run out of the church. Right. Like that's, that's pretty interesting. That's pretty, I mean, that's just, that's an interesting, that's an interesting idea. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, Very, you know, I'm like, what? Wait, it's like, I had to, like, I had to clarify. So you bought, this building and this land for your church, but instead you're doing missions through that building and that land and you're paying rent for a school auditorium to hold your services in. Yeah. And he was like, yeah. 
It's like, man, man, that's why I love you, man. <laughs> yeah, that's. But you know, that's pretty brilliant. I mean, he's he's using. He bought a building for the church. He bought a building for his church, and he's ministering to the church. Yeah, he is. <gasps> whoa, and, whoa. <laughs> you know, and the thing Hashtag is that that God has honored him so much that on like non-believers, non-believers have been like donating stuff. And when I say donating stuff, I don't mean like used clothes or sneakers. I'm talking about like vans, trailers, right? right? Like stuff like that, see, that to, to, to help them go out. Yeah, see, right? that doesn't surprise me. No, no, not at all. But I'm saying like, you know, the measure of your faith, right? The measure yeah, of faith. I mean, you, uh, you, you, you do things to honor and glorify God and God will glorify himself by like doing these things. Yeah, for and, you, and he'll, to, su- to he'll supply. You, right? And, uh, you know, that draws... You know, because a lot of even even if you're a non-believer, you know, a lot of non-believers respect um, when you um, are when you're when you call yourself a Christian um, and you're doing for others. You know, like when when um, you know whenever I'd go to do my, my mission trips and whatnot. You know, yeah, people that would, wouldn't set foot in the door, but they would be like, "Wow, man, that's so awesome what you're doing! Right, that you're going to help." Some you know because because it it it's um because it, it's funny because in their eyes that's how the faith should be and when they you know they get to see it because a lot of times we get so caught up you know right people just anyone gets so caught up in seeing others and what others are doing I thought you were a Christian how come you're doing that so they get so caught up in the that's that um. It's funny. It's really a lot of a lot of times as Christians they get so caught up in the that's <laughs> as well. <laughs> you know? That's true. You know that uh, they get so caught up in that that it's like, um, yo, like, like God's pretty big. <laughs> pretty, pretty huge. Yeah, you know that that happened. Pretty this huge weekend. dude. And um, last weekend and um, and then Sunday he preached again. Yeah, he preached. I was and we showed up and he he totally. I don't know if you were there already when he old school Junior and I. Yeah, no, I was. I got there. No, I was there when he called Junior up. When to he play called him the up keys. to play, but no, this dude like he, he. I think I was like twenty minutes like, late. Like he did it. Like he did it on purpose. He preached like, for like he two hours, and he introduced himself and talked about all this stuff. Then he said, "Ah, and I'm very proud to say that I've got two old friends that I haven't seen in like fifteen years, and I'm so happy that we were able to get together and that they're still doing God's work and they're still in ministry. And I would like for them to stand up and wave and say hi to the church. And I'm like, dude, don't do that to me." I was like, seriously? So, yo, my mom goes to this church. I've already been here, and not even she did that to me. <laughs> so, I, so I, I was like, it was real old school. I stood up, like did a, like a like a fake smile and waved, right, right. <laughs> and Junior too. And afterwards, you know, when we went out hey. to lunch, we went out to lunch. He was like, I got you, didn't I? I got you, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, they called me. They called me uh, earlier this week. Say thanks for coming, and they, uh, they, there. they were there from because I fill out the. I always fill out the visitors card. They didn't call me. They just sent me an email. They just sent me an email. Well, I got a call, so I felt special. <laughs> yeah, you are special because I didn't get no phone call. Right. Or maybe they did. I just didn't pick up. Cause... Yeah, I didn't pick up either when I first saw the phone. But then I was like, well, let me call because it was a local number. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, work. So I called back. I was like, work. do you speak Spanish? I was like, oh yeah, I do. Un poquito. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so if you're in um the orlando area it's um new birth church and the pastor is gabby mejia pastor gabby man if if, if you're in a need of, if you're in need of a church and you're yeah, out there go check them out check them out and do preachers fire and let him know that that you are that you showed up because team outcry told you to go Yes, and maybe he'll invite us. No, I'm just kidding. That's, that's not why we do this. But maybe he will. <laughs> no. But oh, that's, yeah, that was that was a very cool way to um that was a very cool way to start up start off the week. Um so, you know, with that uh only other really other thing that I just want to say is that um did you see that uh new uh Spider-Man or or Captain Captain America Civil War trailer where they showed a little bit more of Spider Man. What are you doing? Jay's over there messing with Aquaman. Um, Leave him alone. I did. I did. Is that like the new TV spot? Yes, where he catches the Winter Soldier's fist. Dude, I think I think the only thing I'm excited about in Captain America Civil War is seeing the Black Panther in action. Yes, and seeing this new Spider Man in action. Yes. 
I yes. could I, I could do without seeing the rest. Yeah, I don't know. I want to see that scene where um Hawkeye shoots Ant Man, and he's riding the, the arrow, arrow, and he and he like runs up to uh, Iron Man's arm. And that that's you know, you that's, know it's gonna be dope. That's, <laughs> he's gonna like, run inside the suit. That's so Give him that's, a willy, that's straight from the willy. comics. It's awesome. <laughs> wet willy, but um, <laughs> not. I just like after that TV spot. Like, I was oh my like, goodness. Oh. That's next week. Oh, so all, all you comic book movie fans, next week, next Thursday, Captain America: Civil War. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not as excited. I'm, I'm, exci- to see I'm this excited. I think I as think, BVS. You know, like I think it'll be well, right? Because you know, more of a DC guy. But um, all I know is this: is that to me, of all the Marvel movies, um, I, I think Captain America: Winter Soldier was probably for me number one. Yeah, I would agree with that. And then number two would be um I concur that. Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm with you on that. You know, those are like to me those are the All right, the top worst one. Which one? The top worst Marvel movie? Yeah. <sighs> There's quite a few well Iron Man two and three are there. Um I, cause I just they were just uh they weren't as good. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm not sure. The top, the worst, worst one? Huh. That's one to think about. Right, so while you think about it, it's not one to think about with me. Now we're talking just the Marvel, not the, like, just the, Marvel. like the Avengers movies. Just the Marvel superhero movies. Or do you mean all the Marvel superhero movies? Like, yeah. Like the X-Men movies? And no, 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 no. I'm just talking about... Marvel Studios. Marvel Studios movies. Okay. Yeah, because I don't want to even talk about the X-Men movies. Right. Just the Marvel Studios movies. Which one? For me, Iron Man 3. Yeah. Iron Man 3 was so bad. For me, it was so bad that I got up to walk out of the theater, and then I remember that I brought my kids with me. <laughs> and there was a, I mean, yeah, there was a lot of. Like, I hated it. I hated it more than I hated the fact that Ultron had moving lips in, <laughs> in the Age of Ultron movie. Yeah, that didn't bother me. That, what? But it bothered me because this was he was made out of vibranium. If vibranium doesn't but did, did his lips move or did his the, the no, face kind of like no his lips move? I'm gonna have to watch that again. No, his lips move. That's, that's how I'm watching it. It's like I'm watching the movie. And then it hit me. It's like why, why? Why? Why are his lips moving? Yeah, as much you know, it's funny because as, as much shade as they threw it at Batman v Superman, like you know, you know, the two Iron Man movie, the two sequels weren't really that good. They weren't, especially three. And then three, three was, you know what killed? You know what killed? What killed me? Killed me for three was I. I didn't even care about that the Mandarin was just an actor or whatever. The worst part of three to me wasn't the Mandarin, which is a lot of the comic book nerds hated, and I and I and I, I under, this one. and I understand that. But it was the fact that he had to be, you know, Pepper had to save him. Ugh. You know, and it's like you make all these suits. You think you're, you're such a tough. You know, that's why. <laughs> Batman is so much better than Iron Man. Because without the suit, Iron Man ain't nothing. He can't fight. He can't do nothing. He needs his suit. It was garbage. I, I... You know what? Now when I get into argument with, with people about <laughs> Batman and Iron Man, who, 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 who would win? That right there. Iron that Man right there. Iron Man 3 was garbage. It was, and it if, was garbage. It was, the worst, it, was, it was the worst thing that Marvel Studios put out. Garbage. Garbage, 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 yeah, garbage, was, garbage. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Garbage, garbage, and I'm and I'm purposely saying it with the New York accent, so it can be <laughs> so just the stress, right? It wasn't garbage. It was garbage. garbage. It was garbage. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. All right, so I'm gonna end with this story because I thought it was so cool. So I saw this little, little video. Garbage. I posted it. I posted it. What'd you say? Garbage. Garbage. I posted the video on my on my Facebook wall because I thought it was hilarious. So back in the in the 60s, 70s during Vietnam, uh, this guy there was these there were these uh, three friends or four friends from New York, and uh, three of them were in Vietnam, and one of them served and he came out and he became a merchant marine, and so when his buddies left, he told him he was, hey, I'm a, I'll buy you guys a beer, and this guy went from New York, went to Vietnam. He took a he took a backpack full of beer, and he went. And he found his buddies in Vietnam, and he bought them a beer. He hung out with them for a couple of days, and then he, during the war, during the war, 
Like he he says when they when they got to port the first that's time, bananas. He that's sees bananas. the the MPs and he his buddy was an MP and he saw the number the unit number or whatever on the helmet and he yeah, was like yeah, oh yeah. he's there he goes hey where's where's so and so there you know oh he's right over there and he's like what are you doing here he goes, <laughs> what are you, I can't told you I'd bring you a beer and he said he had a it's like sixteen Paps blue you know blue ribbon and PBRs in his in his oh that's a video you yes, you I put, yeah I, I have. Put, I, I put haven't that video. seen it. It was awesome. I was looking forward to watching it, it this was weekend. Awesome. You still need to watch it because <laughs> I'm I'm just giving you kind of like a less than the cliff notes. But the great thing about these guys are, and you'll appreciate this being from New York, is they got that New York accent because they were from um they're from Manhattan, uh-huh. northern northern part of Manhattan, yeah, yeah, yeah in yeah, town, and yeah. something like that. But they were like, yeah, you know, it was just that the accent and everything. <laughs> it was just beautiful. It was a beautiful thing. So. Yeah, you need to check it out. Um, I definitely will. Like, that's like a real friend. It goes into a war zone just to buy you a beer. <laughs> 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 so, with that being said. That's awesome. So, with that being said, skirt, we're going to um, we're gonna shift gears here a little bit. Um, so, like I had said earlier, this week uh, was a bit of a tough week for the, uh, the, uh, the Outcry family. And we're not gonna kind of we're not gonna get into um, the the specifics, um, but we are gonna say that it was it was it was a tough week, and um, and it, it you know it affects me because it affects my brother, uh, and and so Jay uh, hit me up, um, you know earlier in the week, and he was just like, hey man, can you just uh, can you just pray for us, and you know some things happen, and and we're both really just. Uh, uh, you know, feeling down, and, and uh, that's when uh, Jay on Tuesday posted the uh, the video. We were gonna have a different discussion this week. Um, Jay just felt compelled um, to share, uh, shift gears, and, and share kind of what was what was on his heart in that moment of um, um, of pain. I would say in that moment of maybe a little confusion um, as to why things happened the, the way they did. So that's kind of I'm so I'm giving you the setup so that Jay can uh, go ahead and pick it up and Jay, why don't you walk us through um, what what you want to share with us today? That was a that was a good intro. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's hard to talk about it. and like Joaquin said, I'm not I'm not going to get into any uh, specifics because I'm just not ready. Right, I'm just not ready. I haven't talked about this at all but i just want to know i just want to know i just want you all to know that um that my house my house something um something happened that impacted all of us right so of course i'm going to reach out to the brothers and um ask for prayer because that's that's what we're called to do within the family right within the kingdom and um but something hit me, and that's why I decided to make the video and change the topic for this week, like when when God's will hurts, right, or what happens, or or, or another another title is like, well, you know, what what do you do when God doesn't make sense? Correct, right? What do you do? Because um, like the things that that were troubling me, like the questions that I had were be beyond the why or the why me but um the the questions that I was that I still am struggling with is um you know not just the why me as um as a heart cry like oh woe is me woe is I but it's more of a um you know Lord why if right because you 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 tend to or, or or I started thinking about years of service, years of dedication, right? Even um even those times where I where I stumbled, all those times where I just flat out fell on my face or just flat out quit, right? <clears throat> I returned and I worked. Like I said, I, I've been in ministry for over twenty years, right? And um. And, and and it's and I guess it's it's our humanity. Our humanity tends to tends to 
I guess think in think of things in terms of reward. Right. Right. Because like if you work real hard, then you get rewarded with a raise or a promotion or whatever. So like my and I, I guess I was a little I was a little job this week towards the end. Towards the end, I was like, you know, you know, why if if I've given you my life, right? I've, I've done this. I've done all these I've things. I've done that. Huh? I've sacrificed my life. I sacrificed my dreams. I've sacrificed like my desires, all the things that I wanted to do, Lord. I, I've sacrificed them to you, right, for you to do your work, to live in poverty, to live in need, to live in whatever, right? Why did you let this happen? Right. Right. Because we, we have, we have um, this, this thought process, um, kind of like you said, you know, I mean, it happens to all of us, even in little things, right? You know, why I've done, you know, you're correct. I've done all these things and yet this person gets this blessing that I want. Right. Right. Or, you know, I've done all these things and this person uh, gets to do this thing that, that I've wanted to do. Um, and, and that's a, that's a tough thing because if we're really honest with ourselves, then we have to ask ourselves, well, wait a minute. If we, if we take a step back, we gotta go, wait a minute. So did I do all these things because I want God's blessings? That's the only reason I did it. Because if that's the only reason we do it, then we're doing it out of very selfish yeah, and it's and prideful and, heart. And it's empty, right? Because, you know, your desires from, the, from out of the mouth, right, speaks the desires of your heart. Or the desires of your heart speak out of your mouth, come out of your mouth, right? So then, um, so like I was, I was numb. Like a part of me is still, is still numb, you know. Um, like I haven't, I'm still not ready to talk about it. I'm still not ready to share Magda has shared and she's talked to a few people and then it's, it's, it's so funny how, how, um, you know, as a, as a Bible nerd and as an ex Bible and as a Bible college kid, you know, you tend, it, it almost like it works against you sometimes to know so much Bible, right? Because, um, that you, you tend to, to bring up all these verses that show that, well, the sovereignty of God to show that God's in control of everything. And then, so, so then you start questioning those things, right? Cause Lord, you know, if, if, if you're in control and everything happens according to your will and how you let it, then you let this happen, right? You mm -hmm. allowed this to happen. You knew this was going to happen and you let it happen anyway. So you didn't protect me. You didn't protect my family. You didn't protect our hearts, right? Right now, the heartache and the pain that we're going to suffer through for the rest of our lives, right? It's because you allowed it, right? And like these are the things that I'm struggling with. These are the things, right? And then and then I rebuke myself because again, you tend to know a lot of Bible, right? You, you know a lot of things, right? right? So I, I tend to rebuke myself and, and 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 give myself like you know, but but God is sovereign and all things do work together for good. And I've seen His hand work in my life in the middle of my trials, in the middle of my struggles, I've seen God's hand, like protect me and cover me and lift me. Right. So, um, but it's just, it doesn't make sense. Right. Cause we have our mindset, our mindset tends to be, um, and this is because, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of people teach kind of this idea that if, uh, if you're a believer and if you become a believer that somehow life is going to be, hunky dory, like everything is going to be good and you're just going to get blessing upon blessing if you do all these things and nothing bad's going to happen. And then someone like me, who is kind of a pessimistic, pessimistic <laughs> kind of person, right? I've gotten better, but you yeah. know, I, I tend to look at things and go, wait a minute. Nothing, nothing was promised to us like that, you know. <laughs> now I say things like that. I'm the bad guy, right? But it's like, you know. Then we look at Job because you you brought him up, and and it's like, well, we'll look at Job. Job had everything, lost everything. Even his friends were a bit scumbagish, and his wife, his wife was you know, telling him, you know, you're a fool, and, you know. And all this How stuff. can you stay there and still be faithful? You, right. what you need to do is curse God and just die, right? But when we, but when we look at that. We don't, what's funny is a lot of times when that's taught, it's not, hey, you know, this is how you suffer and it's good for you. 
you know, and it's a good thing because good things will come out of suffering. It's always like, well, look how much more blessed he was afterwards because he yes. made it through. Yes, um, I'm totally missing the point no, of no, the no, book no, of no, Job. Because uh, let's uh, look at our favorite dude, Paul. That dude should have been living like in a <laughs> in a like a, a hundred thousand square foot mansion, driving like the Rolls Royce of carriages back then. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Of chariots. Of chariots, you know, because that dude was like the dude. I mean, he wrote like a bunch of books in the Bible. <laughs> and everything that happened to him was like, you know, we've talked about it before. Drownings, bitings, beatings. Abandonments. You know, jailments. He died. You know. <laughs> um, <laughs> you, know you know, so. Yeah, so, it's, so it's, a, um, it's a hard thing because at the end of the day, we, you know, the reality is, right, none of us like to suffer. And and unfortunately, a lot of times in church, um, we're told um, that if we do the right things, then we won't suffer. But that's not true because we also live in this broken world. All right. Exactly. You know, and um, I mean, if and that's right, it's because like if Jesus suffered. Right. And I live for Christ. And I'm supposed to be a representative of Christ. Then who the hell am I to think that not only am I not going to suffer, but that I shouldn't suffer. Correct. Right. How arrogant must I be to think that I shouldn't go through things. Right. How arrogant must I be to think that God should keep me from certain things when he didn't keep his son from crucifixion. Now, even when Jesus was in, and I, and I said this in the video, when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was praying to God like so rough and so hard out of the fear and, and, and the anguish that he was going through, you know, that he was sweating blood. And he, like he, his prayer was, you know, take this cup from me, pass this cup from me. Like basically, let, you know, come on, dad, let's, we can, we can do this another Gotta way. Gotta be another way. Let, let's, let's find another way. But then he resolved and he resolved himself and he's like, you know, well, let not my will be done, but let your will be done, right? And even in the Lord's prayer, you know, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, right? So, right. like I said, I, I haven't talked to anybody about it yet, but I, I've been having, <laughs> it's so weird, I've been having like these these inward conversations and to be completely transparent, these inward arguments with God, right? Just like, you know, just I, 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 I sat down last night by myself in my living room and um like if somebody would have recorded me it i would be taken away i'd be in the past oh, like right the now. like the scene in that movie the apostle where he was in his room like just <laughs> screaming at god I, 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 like sunshine was just kept looking at me like Ur? and then she would go back to sleep and then pick up her head again like like, like you know dude, and her doggy sleep. thoughts like dude not only am i trying to sleep but like you're completely wilding out right now what's going on with you Right, I would sit there, and I would um, just have these conversations, right, and these inward arguments with the Lord, and um, and that's the thing because, again, the sovereignty of God is something that we that we know that He is in control. He is in control of everything, right? Right. And um, and even the bad, even the bad, and that's the thing that if you're a believer and you believe that God is sovereign. Right. And if you're a believer and you have the faith that you say you have and you have the trust in God that you say that you have, then even in the bad things, you have to have that trust. You have to hold on to that faith and that trust that even these bad things that God will work it out for his good. Right. So. Right. Um, so that's what I did. Like I went and I totally flipped up. So I guess this week's actual topic we can use for next week. Right. But um, what 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 the Holy Spirit gave me last night. And when Paul talks about this in in in, in Corinthians, he's he's talking about something completely separate. But. This is what the Holy Spirit gave me last night. Right. Because, you know, you can stand up and you can shake your fist at heaven. You can shake your fist at God and you could even like. Like, do, try to pull a Jeremiah and say, that's it. I'm done with you. I'm not going to speak of you anymore. You know, but <laughs> for those of us that have been in this long and, and have such a love and such a relationship with the Lord, it's, it's very, it's it's easy to say with your mouth, but it's really hard to just walk away. Right. right. So, yeah, um, correct. so the, the verses that, that the Lord gave me last night 
in Second Corinthians twelve nine and ten, and it's just bits and pieces, right? But in nine, in nine, Paul says, "But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me." Right? And and from that, I I, I just held on to that. God's grace is made perfect in my weakness because in my weakness, I became angry at God. In my weakness, I became angry at my situation rather than believing that God's will is sovereign. God's will is perfect for my life, right? And um, mm -hmm. and it's very human to filter life through the pain that you're going through at the moment rather than filter that pain through Jesus' grace, Right. right. Correct. Filter that pain through his grace and know that that it's sufficient. That his grace covers all wounds. His grace covers all things. And his grace will lead to a supernatural peace that he will give you during this time. Because it's 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 almost like I held on to that more when my dad passed away three years ago than I did at this current moment. Like it's like I totally forgot. Correct. Right. And 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 you guys, Juice just walked in. You guys were both there. When my dad passed away, and I'm so, so grateful that you guys were because you helped me, you know, I guess um, deal with that or go through that, right? And um, and then 10 says, for the sake of Christ, then I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong, right? So admitting to God, right, you know, this... This thing sucks, right? This is hard. It's rough. I hate that this happened, but I know, Lord, I trust in you that your grace is sufficient, that this is still your perfect and sovereign will for my life, right? And um, there's something to learn from this, right? Or, or if not, there's something to take from this that, that we can help other people, right? That possibly so because some something that we were told is that it happens more than that than people know right right like we don't we don't really know i mean unless you go through it you don't know these things right but apparently it happens a lot more a lot more than people actually know right and then, you know and the, the thing is that you know as we look you know the the you know the scripture when I mean, it talks about you know the weakness calamities hardships um, and what's, what's funny and an, another way of kind of looking at it is, um, a lot of times we think we go through things because God's trying to teach us something. And I, I was thinking about that today, actually, um, at work and, you know, a lot, you know, in here, the only thing, and if you read the whole, uh, the whole, you know, like the whole verses within, within the context of the chapter, you know, the only thing that was being taught, right, was was Paul was like saying, look, I realize that I just need to rely on God's grace. Correct. Period. And I know um, a lot of times I was just, I was having a conversation with my mom too long ago, and she was like, you know, we're going through all these things. What is it that God's trying to teach us? And and we always tend to view it that way. And I think the sometimes if we look at it that way, then when we don't get answers, we get frustrated. You know, when we're like, well, but I've done everything right. So what is there to learn? Well, the, I think a lot of times the lesson, uh, even Job, right? The lesson wasn't that you did anything. But the lesson is that we need to filter our pain uh, through the grace of through the grace of God. And we need to try to look at it through through those lenses and saying, I don't understand it. Um, you know, I've done everything right right I've, I've walked the walk i've been you know living the life um but there's still hardship and pain and i need to i need to look at it through the lens of grace through the lens of god's grace not for others but through the lens of god's god's grace for me right and knowing that 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 grace if we filter our pain and our suffering through god's grace then um we'll be able to feel, feel 
you know, that peace that surpasses all understanding. In his presence. Right? Only in his presence. Right. And, and, and no... The hurt doesn't go away. It doesn't no, mean no, that the it, hurt it, goes away. The hurt doesn't go away at all because I, no. I still... Like, I still feel hurt when I think about my dad's passing away and other things. But, you know, it, it doesn't go away. But there's, there's comfort in knowing that an everlasting, sovereign, loving God is there. And loves you. Right? To take you... <laughs> To take that pain away, okay. or to to cover you and to 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 caress you and coddle you in His love, so that you're able to, you know, to 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 pass through that, to walk right. through that storm, right. right? It's like that. It's like that. Remember that poem, Footprints, where the yeah. guy's like, "I've been walking in the sand. I always saw two sets of prints, and there was this one set. God, where were you? In the, and where were you during those those tough times? And what did Jesus say? He said those. It was in those times that I carried you. It was those times that I carried right. you. So then, um. But then last week, you we spoke about James, and you brought this up today, and I'm grateful for that. You know, James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4, you know, he writes, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Right? So it's almost... <laughs> it's like it's crazy like the first verses second Corinthians 12 9 and 10 you know in there we find grace and strength right through our suffering through our weakness we find grace and strength and then james the brother of jesus teaches that that we when our faith is tested that we should count it as joy we I mean, like we should be happy when we get these tests of faith and we go through these struggling because you know it 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 produces steadfastness it, it produces long suffering it produces a strength of will and an assurance in god that cannot be shaken and that cannot be moved right and it says that you may be perfect and complete lacking in nothing and and, and i'm grateful that you brought this up because like i totally didn't think about these whereas when my, my time of homelessness this is exactly what i held on to right right and this is like oh, lord i'm gonna go through this but like if you don't help me, I'm going to die. Because right? I, I, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll admit it. I wasn't made to be living in the streets. <laughs> I, was, I wasn't created for that. Like, I'm from I'm, the streets, like, I'm, I'm not from the streets. I'm not, that, I'm not that guy. It's like, I don't do camping. If it's like in a sleeping bag, on the ground, in a tent, that's not me. I, I do camping no. in, a, in a lodge, on a bed. <laughs> I, I mean, I'll sleep in the sleeping bag on the floor, but it'll be, it'll be in a lodge. It'll be in a lodge, <laughs> in a right, cabin. or in a cabin or something, right? And I'm not that guy. But um, and, you know, a friend of Magda's, um, one of her best friends, Blue Eyes, uh, sorry, Jessica, Jessica, she um, she told she she told us, you know, you know, God's will is God's will, right? And it's for us to trust in God's will and to hold on in God's will. And if He answers our prayers, as far as the why, then that's His will. And if He doesn't, then that's still his will. That's a that's a right? tough and it's a tough thing to say. And that's yeah, it is. It's a tough thing to hear. It is, and, and, and especially a tough thing to, to hear from someone that like you hold close, right? For someone that you love and you, it's part of your inner circle, right? I, I think that's probably why I don't want to talk to you guys about it because right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not ready to hear that yet, even though I know it to be true and I've said it to myself and I've prayed and and, and I and I know that. And you've said it to us. You know, and, yeah, I, I say it to you guys all the time whenever you guys go through things. But, um, like, I'm not ready to hear it right now. Like, I, I'm, I'm not I, – I, I want it to be clear that I'm not angry at God. I'm not, like, um, in a phase of rebellion, shaking my fist at the heavens or anything. You know, I, I just – I just need a – I just I, – I need – I need this moment of just, like, just silent reflection. You know, it's almost I, – I feel it. Like um, like David, right? David had to shut himself away and pray and like, you know, throw ashes on his head and whatever. And then after that, he was done. He got up, he washed up, he ate, and it was like nothing, right? So I, I feel like this is, this is my time of that. This is my time of that. I've been um. So David had David did it for three days. I've been <laughs> so today's the third day. I've been going to sleep like late. Because, you know, I, I've been staying up afterwards just to, 
just to pray and to ask and just to talk to God and, and, and try to, and try to make sense, try to make sense for myself more than for anybody else so that I can be, and it's mainly so that I can be a better help and a better source of comfort for my house rather than, you know, act like it's nothing because it's not nothing. The pain is there. The hurt is there. The anguish is there. Right. And I know that, that God's hand is in the midst of all that, but I need to cover my house through all this while God is covering me. Right. So, right. you know, sometimes, sometimes, you know, that sometimes God's will, sometimes God's will hurts. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't, right? and sometimes it doesn't, make it, sense. it doesn't make sense at all. And you can ask God why until you're blue in the face. But, you know, and, and it's funny. We go back to Job. And when, when Job finally snapped that he asked God, well, why did you let this happen to me? Why this? You know, do, and, and I'm fearful of that because I don't want I don't want God to answer me the way he answered like, Job. Um, do, right. Do, like when, when he told Job, well, where were you when, when I hung the earth on nothing? Right, it's like, it's like um, damn, um, I, you you know where I was. Right? Where were you? <laughs> like, who are you? Like, who are you to ask me what my will is? Right? When Paul teaches that his ways are higher than our ways, and his thoughts, uh, our thoughts are not his thoughts. You know, I I I I had this saying that I I haven't actually said in a long time, but it came to me this week while I was suffering through all this. Right, that. Faith isn't faith until it's all you're holding on to, right? And sometimes God's will isn't going to make sense. And sometimes God's will might hurt, right? But it doesn't mean that he doesn't love you. It doesn't mean that he's not there covering. And it doesn't mean that he's left us or his grace is gone. His grace is there. His love is there. His covering is there. And if we have the faith that we say, in God, then that means that we trust fully good, bad, confusion, the things that don't make sense, but God is still God. God is true. God remains God. He remains sovereign and he remains Lord of all. Right? So if you're going through something now where you feel that it's a test of your faith, then, then, then hold on to the words of James where he says that to stay strong and stay holding on to the Lord because it, 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 it brings a strength and steadfastness, right? Hold on to the words of Paul where he says that his grace, that God's grace is sufficient. And instead of filtering the pain or life through this pain or through this suffering that you're going through right now, right? Filter that pain and suffering through God's grace, right? And let it, let it envelop you. Let it envelop you. And, yeah. and, and God will still see you through. Yeah. And so, you know, um, <clears throat> With uh, with that, you know, not a whole lot to add. More, just um, you know what, life life is tough, and we, you know, we we've said it before, and I think you know, it's something we'll always we'll always say. You know, we're always kind of told that life will be good if you're a believer, and things are gonna be all great and you know, fantastic. But the reality is, we live in a fallen world, and things happen, and um, all we can do is trust that our heavenly father knows what's going on and he's in command. And, you know, like Jay said, like we said earlier, filtering all this, this hurt that we might feel filtering it through, uh, his grace and his love, even when it doesn't make sense. And so, uh, with that, uh, we're done for, for today. Um, Guys, if uh, you guys are going through anything, leave us a comment. Uh, we'll be, you know, we, we would love to pray for you. I'd love to pray for you and whatever it is that you're going through. Uh, and with that being said, uh, this is Joaquin. This is Jay. And this is the Overflow Podcast at thisisoutcry.com. Peace.